Okay. Um, thank you so much, Chess. Um, so today I'm gonna talk about the um, uh, blockchain energy trading uh, in smart buildings. So, so the technique I'm gonna I'm gonna explain a little bit about multi-agent system and the uh, use of the IoT devices. Um, so I just wonder uh, how many of you guys haven't heard about multi-agent system. Okay, few, right? Okay. So maybe I go over it a little bit. So I just want to refer to the event on the first June in Thailand. You know what happened? Seventy provinces in Thailand blackout. Because why? Because just one of the um, power plant in Laos get blackout. Right? There's like thunderstorm hit the transmission line. Just one power plant back blackout. One thousand megawatt. You know Thailand the um, peak. Power demand is around like 30,000 megawatt. Just one plant, 1,000, you know, went down. The whole country almost went, almost went down, right? So we, I think we have some serious issue about the, we call it uh, energy security, right? So in the future, uh, why not we can depend, um, you know, like uh, by ourselves? So why, why, why can't we like, generate power by ourselves if something happened, if any event happened? We can sustain. We we still have power to power our homes, right? Um, so uh, here's the um, uh, just the transformation of power and energy industry. So today we are like in traditional power grid, right? You have power generation, transmission, distribution. So power generating at the uh, power plant flow from through transmission line to your home, right? But in the future, uh, it's gonna be like two way power flow, and we're gonna have something called the uh, energy cloud where um, uh, electricity energy is going to go to cloud and uh, everything gonna be, um, can be connected, right? Like your car, your home, your building, your, your um, solar PV, right? And we have another concept for, uh, called prosumer. So today everyone prosumer because you buy electricity from, from uh, PEA or MEA, right? If you live in Bangkok, not to worry, right? You buy from MEA. If you live in other provinces, you buy from PEA, right? So in the future, we're gonna have the concept called prosumer. So you can like, uh, sometimes you can, if you have excess energy, you can sell that electricity, right? You can sell that excess energy to the power grid, right? And uh, for now in Thailand, we we part we have partner like we have ECAT, MEA, and PEA, like the three electric utilities in Thailand. We partner together, develop the blockchain energy trading platform called NETP, National Energy Trading Platform, right? So you guys are developer, maybe when the platform ready, if you the prosumer, every one of you guys can code, right? Maybe you can code and try to find the best uh, strategy for yourself to trade in this energy market, right? So we also look into like the future trend of IoT. I think everyone uh, know about this. So we expecting 50 billion um, devices, IoT devices, by 2020, and most of them is gonna be like okay. Number one is gonna be wearable, but second one, smart city, smart home, and industrial internet. They all um, you know like connect to power grid, right? That's why uh, electric utility in Thailand we want to focus on in the IoT, right? And also actually I, I just came back from China, I went to the CES, Consumer Electronic Show in China, right? There's a lot of IoT, and I think it's gonna far more exit 50 billion. Um, and I have some example that I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you why. So based on these uh, IoT devices, they have different user experience, different UI. You buy solar inverter from GrowWatt, you're gonna get uh, one app. You're gonna, you buy inverter from, you know, like other ABB, Siemens, you're gonna get uh, Another app, right? You, for now, you can get light bulb, Wi-Fi connected. So in China, everyone know me, right? Me and Yi Light. This is pretty cheap. I, I, got, I got the light, you know, the light bulb. You know, you can change color, you can dim it. It's super cheap, like um, 500 baht. It's really cheap. Um, uh, and you have, you're going to have, like, connected AC with a station. Um, uh, everyone know Alexa, right? Google Home, uh, security camera. Um, uh, switch and the cost is going down so much. I went to CES last year, right? The cost was two times than this year. For this year, I, I go there and I can buy a like, um, camera for like 300 baht. Super cheap. You can get RTSP streaming 
meaning that you buy that, you know, like sheep uh, camera, you do whatever with it, right? You apply deep learning, you want to do YOLO, right? You want to do like um, whatever, like object detection, phase detection, whatever. You can like get the stream of the video through RTSP protocol, right? And uh, wearable, there's a lot of wearable. I also got one here. It's, it's so advanced, you know, it's like it can measure my intake, uh, what, how much protein I eat through our day, how much uh, fat, carb I ate, you know, it can show me and show the graph, right? It's, it's, um, so, so the technology is um, quite uh, advanced. Um, so here's the uh, solar inverter. Um, if you, if you uh, home install solar, you can get a uh, discount web and, and um, a mobile app, right? There's a lot of uh, smart home windows covering like, um, um, like uh, you know, like safety, security, energy, and, and um, uh, many other applications. Um, so this is the example of the um, smart home app in China. So I think, okay, try it. So it's Chinese language. <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay, so uh, what I show you uh, in China for now, um, they developed something they call it point to control. It's not like it's so if you if you have smart home app, right? If you want to control some device, you have to scroll down and select which device you want to control, right? In China now, is, no, you can just use your mobile phone, point to device what you want to control, and you you ex uh, the, the UI gonna change automatically. So if you point to AC, UI pop up AC. You point to curtain, UI pop up curtain. You can see from demo. There's no need to scroll, they don't need to change. Um, so they did it using a Bluetooth um, sensor. So there's two Bluetooth sensor, one for distance, one for orientation. And they coined this data from these two Bluetooth and try to identify. So they call it point to control. Um, and like, there's um, tons of um, smart home devices. So this is the picture I took like uh, two days ago at the CS event. Uh, and one thing that, um, you know, is like um, IoT data devices is quite um, heterogeneous, right? There's different vendors, different data. Uh, I think for one thing that um, interesting is the um, the, the community called Open Connectivity Foundation, OCF. So for OCF, they're gonna come up with a standard for all IoT devices. And if you want to go for standard, maybe you can look into the, the OCF. Uh, this one, the slide from, from uh, Alibaba. So, you, you know, um, the reason why I, I, I think that, okay, the um, uh, number of IT devices gonna go far beyond 50 million devices because Alibaba, announced two days ago, they, now they have Aligini. So Aligini is exactly like Amazon Echo, Alexa. They can do whatever Amazon can do. You know, like they have like a genie, the small one, big one, you know, exactly like what Amazon does. And they said, uh, for now, they don't call IoT. They, 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 they don't call IoT as Internet of Things, but they call it as Intelligence of Things. So every device in China, they put AI into it. So voice control in Chinese is pretty normal. Every device can, you know, you can talk with it in Chinese. And Ali, so Alibaba, right, make a chip, Bluetooth, they, 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 they go for, they don't go for, for Wi-Fi, they don't go for Zigbee, they go for Bluetooth match. So, you know, the, the uh, next generation of Bluetooth and they make the chip cost $1. And they want to put it in every device. Uh, so here's some um, uh, example of uh, Aligini. So this is like Alexa, right? And a lot cheaper, a lot, lot, lot cheaper than Alexa. Okay, you got an idea, right? So um, for uh, smart home, 
these devices are mostly they're not working together, right? They they have they come from different vendors. They don't comply with OCF. They produce a lot of of uh, data, right? So it's quite hard for for homeowner, right? Um, to to understand the data and make use of it, right? So at PEA we um, uh, build the house. Uh, so we have the solar house and uh, we have like electric vehicle. We have the electric vehicle charger uh, inside. On the right hand side, we have the um, uh, inverter room. We have solar. Uh, we have uh, AC storage. On the left hand side, we have uh, IoT devices like AC, like um, air, um, we have AC. We have a lighting switch. We have smart plug uh, sensors, right? So what we do, uh, we build the the home gateway, the black one the PA Hive gateway and we create like, one mobile app that can coordinate with all devices. Like um, so here's are the devices that we experimenting. So we have like um, IR control, smart meter, water wall control, uh, solar PV inverter, um, uh, and so on. Um, so for here how we architecture our software, since the um, uh, devices can have different um, communication protocol, some device gonna be Zigbee, Z-Wave, Wi-Fi, right? Um, some gonna be like uh, Bluetooth, uh, SNMP. We we create um, uh, the platform uh, using multi-agent system that I'm gonna show you, and we put it into our gateway, and this gateway communicate with cloud using MQTT. So we have MQTT um, send MQTT data to the cloud, and we store those data to cloud and and we have some uh, use machine learning library. So for our cloud, we are using uh, Microsoft Azure, and uh, for uh, and then we build the mobile app. Okay, so here's the um, software architecture. So we have five five layers. So we have the connectivity layers that we gonna write the software to translate all the uh, protocols that I'm gonna show you later. For example, like if you have like um, if you have sick B device, we can have we gonna need to write some Python code to to uh, communicate with the. Can you step on here? Okay. <laughs> okay. So if we, if I have like uh for example like Modbus inverter, most solar inverter they are Modbus, right? They have this resistor, right? So we gonna write the Python code here to translate um uh, data to communicate with the inverter, right? Translate data and make it and standardize it. So that every devices from from these vendors, right, gonna talk the same language on 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 the uh, OS layer. We call it uh, OS layer, and we have the multi-agent system here. Then we put data to our database, create application, and and show it on the UI. So here's the um, example of our uh, mobile app. So you can go through it quickly. So you can select home, and this is going to be the energy report for, for your home. So for now, we focus on building application for, for energy management. But I think it's, it's our uh, strength for, for uh, like electric uh, company like, like us, right? So here, uh, all devices, you can come and you can see uh, all devices in your home here. So, so every device is going to be listed uh, inside our app, and you just need to use only one app for your home. Okay? Okay, so here is the, um, the agent platform. Uh, so, so basically, uh, if you look at our gateway, right, so here's the key. So we're gonna have the, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna need to write a Python code for, for um, um, you know, communicating with the devices inside the gateway. And we use the concept of the uh, multi-agent system. So basically, uh, I think I can show you another picture that's gonna be better. But basically, we're gonna have the um, uh, we develop agent like um, uh, like uh, you can think about it like uh, multi-trading. So one agent is one trading. And for this agent, if you have like, for example, like sensor agent, if you have power meter, you're gonna have like. Uh, for if you have one power meter, there's going to be one power meter agent in your home. If you have five AC, you're going to have five AC agents inside your home. So one agent, gonna, you have to run it for one device. And this agent can talk together. It's like if you want to solve one task, 
uh, these agents gonna you have to have uh, multiple agents to work together. So we don't write a central software that control everything, but we write distributed application, right? So it's gonna be like you're gonna have many agents, each talk to one device, and they work together. If, for example, if you want to save energy for your home, right? You know that okay, today may be not sunny, and uh, you have you have energy store left in your in your uh, energy storage, and you're gonna use power a lot. So these agents have to work together to, to save your energy by looking at your comfort. For example, this one. So in order to make them to work together, you, have, you need to have the language. It's like if you know TCP and UDP, right? Based on those protocols, it's gonna be pretty much like the same thing. But for agents, you need to have, um, we have the standard language called FIPA, Foundation for Intelligent Physical Agent, right? And you need to like, um, um, create this um, protocol for, for the agents to, to talk together. Okay. I cannot go into much detail, but you can ask me later. So, and, and uh, we also have to look into like, uh, some standard to uh, simplify the data point. Because, for example, you buy aircon for, you know, from, from uh, Daikin or from Saito Denki. So those deck aircon, they have different data points. You get from the API, it's totally different. You need to have some standard to, to define, okay, what going to be the, the data point, right? Uh, so when you start the gateway, what you're going to have, you're going to have the uh, DY discovery agent. So this is the Python code. Um, so what it's going to do, this Python code, right, this agent is going to do uh, SSDP discovery. It's going to broadcast a message um, uh, to the network of your home like this. And it's gonna try to find like uh, what uh, what are the devices inside your home using uh, SDP if it's uh, Wi-Fi connected devices, right? So it's gonna broadcast to the Wi-Fi devices, uh, and then if it like got the message, it's gonna reply the IP back, and then if you got the IP, you can do everything with the devices, right? Uh, it the same the same um, topology apply for Zigbee. Modbus backnet devices. After you discover it, you gonna see like um, that's gonna be like uh, agents inside your 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 um, environment, right? So you can have this if you have AC, it's gonna pop up with AC agent, lighting agent, plug load agent, or all this stuff, right? So it depends on how many devices inside your home, and once device discovery agent discover is gonna start this agent automatically. Okay, so after that, uh, you're gonna get like uh, the monitoring agent, just monitor status of device and control agent to control the controllable devices. And for this, in order to, to um, uh, communicate with device, you're gonna need to write the Python code. It's around like uh, 200 lines each to, to write the, the script to talk with the device. And you can, like, when we, when we um, monitor it, we can store data, like local database, Firebase, or, or we can do, like, um, uh, real-time streaming and plot to, to see the profile of the device. Okay, so if you want to learn more about multi-agent system, I cannot go deep, but uh, you can look into this one. It's, uh, there's a conference called Autonomous Agent and Multi-Agent System. It's, there's a lot of theory behind it, so if you're interested, you can look into this one. Okay, so uh, based, on, based on this, what we try to achieve is that we, we think that, okay, in the future, we want to make home like a uh, mobile phone. So for, for your phone, you can make it smarter by downloading app. For home, the same thing. Uh, we want to create like some of the market so that you can download app for your home. If you want your home to see objects, you want your home to see human, right? Do face recognition. You're gonna want to download the face recon recognize app for your for your home or, or for, for today, I'm gonna talk about the energy trading. So we're gonna talk about the energy trading application for, for home. Okay. So, okay. Here's the example, but before we go there, let me stop and go to the, um, 
Okay. So for our our um oh sorry. Okay. So for for um our agent development, we uh, we create the, the platform that derived from uh, Wontron. Wontron is the multi-agent system development platform that you can go and download and, and try to develop agent environment by yourself. You can go to uh, their uh, GitHub and uh, their documentation. So, so if you want to learn more about, about the uh, multi-agent system development, you can, so this is the, the best uh, resource you can, you can go to and learn more about it. Okay, let me go to code. Okay, so here's the... Okay, so once you clone it, it's, can you see it or is it too small? Okay, should be better. Okay, so uh, when you when you clone it, right, it's gonna be like some example uh, agent, right? So I gonna okay, I'm gonna go through the structure. Uh, okay, so uh, when you clone it, it's gonna be they're gonna have the um, folder called agent. So for agents, so this can be um, the example agents that you can can try to to play with it. So basically, what you want to do with IoT, you want to monitor it and control. We're not talking about building application for now, right? Just uh, getting status of it and and uh, control it. So it, it's gonna have agent. Uh, for us, what we build another. Uh, so so we create the script at the device API. So with this device API folder, we collect all the um, uh, script that uh, we, we write to talk with the device, to communicate with the device, I can show you later. Uh, and we're gonna have the uh, Wontron library that you can dig deep into it and, and see how it works. Uh, okay, let me show you some example. Uh, okay, let's go to the device API first. Uh, cloud device. We have the uh, smart meter, which is the cloud device. So this one should be really, really simple. Oops. Oh. So basically, when we when we want to um, uh, communicate with the device, we write a script called the class API. So with this class API, the main method is the. So this this is for device that we can only get status, right? It's Wi-Fi. So with this, uh, we we have the method called get device status that gonna receive the um, parameter once you create the class here. So these are the parameter. When you create the class, you give the device ID, you give the, um, the URL. And what this method gonna do, it just gonna call get. So this is super simple, right? When you call the, um, when you call the get status, you get the return JSON, uh, you get return um, uh, serialized data. You have to load it through like using JSON load, convert to JSON, and you pass it. This is super simple for, for cloud device. And they apply for, for um, uh, many cloud device. But if you have device that um, uh, has a token, you have to handle the reconnect or, or, or get refresh token to authenticate with uh, the device. So this is the LAN device. So LAN device, the same thing. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so what we what we do here, we have for the device that you can um, control, we're gonna have the get device data and set device data. So we use these two method that um, the agent can call call this class API. So for for get the same thing, but for set, we're gonna define the post message, what uh, what parameter you want to control device and and um, use this parameter to um, call the device API, like this one. So this um, super simple. You if you play with uh, REST API, so I think you know about this one, right? When you want to control, you just request post to the endpoint, and then uh, you um, can control. So this one, the example of Daikin. So Daikin, they have the Wi-Fi adapter that. If you put that adapter into your Daikin AC, and then you can you can uh, use the REST API to monitor and control. So this the the um, Wi-Fi device. But some of you may think, why well, need to query my device all the time? I just want my device to tell me when it changes status, right? When someone go there, use II remote to turn off. You want to listen to the event, right? So there's some device that can also do that. And you can uh, you can have the socket that listen to to that event. So um, okay. So for for some device, you can create the socket. If it's Wi-Fi device, you can create a socket and then you listen to the. Uh, to to socket and when device change the status it gonna send is gonna send a um, um, message to your to your script and then uh, you can you can listen to uh, this this is the example of a uh, Wemo smart plug when you go there you click off it sends status to your script and then you know okay it's off when it's on when you click on it's gonna send st status to this um, uh, script Okay, and then you do the same thing, and then you do like the. And then you do get device status, the same thing. And then you can control it. Okay, so I, I cannot go like deeper into this, but if you interested, you can see. I just want to show some example. Um, if you have the uh, Modbus inverter, uh, if you have Modbus inverter, uh, some of it it's gonna be like um, this one. Some of inverter they can use the um, uh, I think it's um, SNMP protocol, so it's based on IP. So you can like get its status and you can like pass it like the same like this one. So this this uh, very simple. Just pass the the data coming from device. Okay, so. I think you got a picture. Uh, okay, so when we look at the agent, I have a very simple agent that I can show you. Uh, this one. Okay, so this this one is the uh, first agent that every agent developer have to uh, look into our library. So Wontron has uh, a library called the messaging. So you can see like uh, messaging hell, status good. It has, agent can have different status, right? Based on its state. Uh, you can have like a platform, VAP agent. So this one are the core uh, library for, for agent and utility um, uh, library. So, um, okay, you can go there. So once you import all, all the um, necessary uh, library, um, here the class, okay, 
So with class, you have So you're going to create a class like listener agent, and then you're going to have the main method that call this uh, class, right? So uh, for this example, it's, what it does, it's pretty simple. Uh, when you start the agent, what you want it to do, you put it into the init. So sorry. So this is going to be the load uh, config parameter. So if you have, uh, for example, if you want this to connect to database, right, when it start, you can identify the config parameter here. And then uh, once it uh, start, you want to define the, the agent parameter uh, that you want to, to use. Uh, and this one, uh, what it does, like it's gonna it's gonna subscribe to the uh, to the message bus that you want to um, listen to. Okay, ten minutes. Okay. So so with this uh, with this code. Your agent can publish and subscribe to to the message bus, and it can like uh, with this capability, you can like um, make an agent that talk internally. You don't need to go to the cloud. So so with this uh, with this um, uh, with this uh, one trial environment, you can create like um, intelligent um, agent in uh, internally. So. I think maybe like, less time left. I can. So this is just the example that I So I create two agents. So this one is a uh, listener agent one, and another agent is lis listener agent two, and they uh, send message um, uh, back and forth, um, like like this one. So agent one subscribe to the agent two, and the agent agent two publish to the um, to agent one. This one. So it's a uh, simple script. So. Uh, if uh, any of you want to learn more about it, maybe we can talk later. Okay, just go back to slide. Okay, so based on this, what we does is that we we develop the um, the agent platform for for uh, smart building, and this is the school that we apply our our agent system. Uh, so. What the, the problem with this school is that they have too much excess energy. You can see there, there's a solar panel here, there's solar panel at this um, uh, building, there's solar panel over here. You know, you don't see it, but it's, believe me, it's here. So, so uh, the problem is that they produce too much energy. There are a lot of excess energy that's flowing through the power grid, right? If you don't, if you don't use it, your power is going to flow back to the grid. And we don't like PA. Don't like why, you know, because uh, some safety issue. You know, if the power flowing back, we used to have the case that our technician, right, they go to maintenance and they think that okay, power flow one way from substation to home, right? There's never power from home to substation, right? There's no way that power can flow there. And we have technician who, who you know, uh, got shocked from this. Um, Electricity and he did. So we, for now, we don't have we don't have um uh you know like we call it grid code to save these uh, people from 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 this thing right and and we don't we PA don't like it PA don't like you if you produce you should consume inside and don't you know uh, inject back to the grid right so so um here's the problem that we try to solve so this school. What they install, they have the solar hybrid inverter. For solar hybrid, why we call it hybrid inverter? Because um, sometimes it can uh, uh, produce energy from, from solar, right? And if grid blackout, it can use energy from, from energy storage to uh, feed the home, right? 
so there's no blackout. Another type of solar inverter we call grid tie inverter. If power grid blackout, your home also can, can blackout because they don't have AT storage. Okay, uh, this I skip it. So we install uh, IoT devices at the school. So I'm gonna explain later. Um, okay, so this one gateway, uh, IR converter to control AC, uh, multi sensor to uh, monitor activities inside rooms. Uh, we have smart plug to enable energy trading. I, I'm gonna tell later uh, what we do, right? Um, uh, hybrid inverter and, and this um, smart meter. Okay, skip this. So this um, what we do. Um, so there's uh, devices install. So this the uh, panel that we, we install smart plug here, and this one is uh, the uh, relay switch. So we can we can use this for for energy trading. Uh, so this one is the uh, uh, real time power uh, duration and consumption. Oh, sorry. And this is the data we collect. Okay, I can go quickly. Um, okay, so. This is data from load, so there's no pattern. So the, the load profile is very really uncertain for, for, the, uh, for the building. Uh, with this, uh, what we see is that um, uh, when, we, when we operate a solar inverter in a grid tie, grid tie means that we allow the power to flow back to the grid. You can see on the nice weather, uh, clear sky day, there's a, a solar producing is um, Pretty nice shape, right? You can see this um, graph. And if we limit uh, the the inverter not inject power back to the grid, you're gonna see this graph. So it's gonna produce what you consume, right? And okay. So the problem is that if you put the inverter into grid time mode, what gonna happen? You get reverse power flow back to the grid. So a lot of power, right? Flow flow back to the grid. You use only 10, 10 unit, 10 kilowatt hour. You produce 27. You feed back to PA 20, 20 unit, right? Use 10, but give back to PA 20, and we don't pay you. So this you don't get paid, right? And okay, for self consumption mode, you gonna produce what you consume, right? You can see load more than PV because you still need to consume power during the night, right? Okay, so with this, we're gonna see that, okay, we like, we like when you do cell consumption, you don't inject power back to the grid, but you lost 40% of your solar energy, right? And we see the trend with the trend, so every, every day the same, meaning that you lost 40% of your energy every day, right? So we, so what we do, uh, we apply, okay, I skip this. Okay, so what we do, uh, we have the uh, solar inverter and we re-architect our, our software architecture and we put the uh, blockchain ledger here and get, getting uh, data from, from the IoT devices. So we, we simulate the environment where you have system operator, which is a PA. Um, uh, oh, so, sorry, this regulator, regulator meaning like some government, so this is PA, uh, financial provider, and then your home. So if you, you're gonna see, okay, I skip this. Okay, so this building has energy left over, you, they have excess energy, so what we do is that we uh, develop the platform using Hyperledger, and if there's excess energy that we don't use, and we don't produce, we're gonna, we're gonna use the forecast, right, to see. Okay, we're gonna have power excess energy, and then we use this. We're gonna control this smart plug to transfer power from here to here, so that this power don't flow back to to the grid to PA. So it's gonna flow from here to here, 
So before this building consume power from, from PA. Okay. So uh, if you I think you're gonna see here. So this is real time um, power consumption that we that we monitor uh, for for two buildings. Um, so here's the um, architecture. So you're gonna have so uh, what we build we have we build the uh, composer rest server. And the agent, the smart meter agent of two buildings, they talk to this composite server through uh, REST API. And that building can know like, how much it produced and how much energy transfer from this one to this one. And this guy can know how much energy it received from this building. So initially, uh, this building, gonna, there's no coil. So we create another coil called energy coil on, on Hyperledger. And this building, uh, it doesn't have energy at the first, but it has coin. This one. So uh, after the trading, you can see the total load of two buildings is the load from from science building plus the load from admin building. So this this graph is the combination load, so that meaning that it it uh, exchanging energy. So this, you can see the back end of the um, hyperledger running. And we, we do uh, something called resident to resident transaction. So all the trading is going to be blocked and recorded on the back end. So uh, once we run it, we're going to see that uh, this building, you're going to gain more coins when you sell electricity. And uh, this building, gonna, you're going to lose coins, but you gain uh, energy. And these are the uh, transactions that we uh, recorded. So if you look back into the agent, we, we create an energy trading agent uh, for two buildings. And this agent can like, um, you know, like, uh, talk together and um, uh, call the REST API of the, uh, of the composer so that um, um, they can record the trading. So uh, I think. Maybe no time for this one. Okay, so here's the investment cost. So we break down the investment cost for solar rooftop PV installation. It's around like, uh, 300,000 baht. For IoT, it's around like 22,000. So the cost of IoT that enable this um, uh, energy trading is around like 7%. And we hope that if we can do the trading, we can get it recouped um, uh, with less than one year. Uh, yeah, we also do another stuff like apply like um, uh, like what I told you like we do like our phasation, do some experiment with deep learning. Uh, so this uh, the first direction that we that we try to do, and um, try something with uh, YOLO to to uh, capture people inside inside home and uh, use this uh, information for for uh, energy measurement uh, inside the home. Okay, so that should be it for my presentation. And if you have, if you have more questions about about this, uh, you can come and, and ask me like how how we did it. Okay, thank you so much.